Today we'll be learning all the basics of C++ and also coding in general. So stick along and we'll be learning how to code some very basic stuff within the next 10 minutes or so. Let's say at the beginning of the day you started off with $100. And you were to go to the store and buy a game for $60 you're going to end up with $40 left. Math and coding work almost the exact same way. You can also have this formula y equals mx plus b. As you can tell, every single one of these letters is a variable that represents a single number. And coding works the exact same way. You'll have a variable that can represent something, except it doesn't need to represent only a number. There's a character variable, which represents a single character or a single letter, such as a or y, anything like that. If you want to represent a number, you can use an int or an integer. It'll represent a whole number. If you want to represent a number with a decimal place, you can use a double or a float. So you can have numbers in the decimal place. Say you wanted to combine a lot of these together and store them, such as a word, or you wanted to make a sentence or a paragraph, you can use a string. A string will combine multiple things. So you can get A, B, C, 1, 2, 3, as such. And that'll be saved within a string. And say you just wanted an on off switch, something you usually might not see, but it's a Boolean. So if you're not used to coding, you might not see this, but it's basically a one or a zero or a true or a false. So if you want to know something's happening, if something's on or something's not happening or something's off, you can store it within a Boolean. Now going back to our original problem, we had an integer with our wallet and of the game and our wallet was set to 100 and the game was set to 60. We can do the simple equation of wallet equals wallet minus game to get the new wallet price or you can also just do it even simpler just like this wallet minus equals game. From here it's going to take game out of wallet it's going to subtract it. You can use this for any sort of operator such as division multiplication or addition and now let's say you want to store multiple variables within a single thing say you have your name you have how much is in your wallet and you have your age all these can be different variables this will be a string this can be a float it's because it's going to have a decimal place because it's going to have a dollar and a cent and this right here your age will just be an integer so if you want to store this, you'll store it in something called a structure. And a structure is just a database that will save them all together. And now that we have the structure with a name, wallet, and an age, we can create multiple different people with the same information. So let's just call this structure person. Now if you want to create a new person with this information, you can just do person. And we can say person1. So now person1 will have a name. And you can set that to whatever you want it to be. Say Joe. And now person one will also have a wallet. And we can set that to a dollar six cents. And then I'll we'll also have an age. And we'll just set that to 14. So as you can tell, we created a new person and we filled in all of its information inside the structure. So if we wanted to, we can create another person. We can just do P2, and you'll be able to pass in all the information you want. And there as you go, you stored and created a whole new person based off the exact same structure as before. And now, how are you going to make it so you can organize all these people together? So you had a person 1, person 2, etc, etc, all the way to 45. There's multiple different ways to store multiple different variables or multiple different structures together. So keep in mind this works with a variable and a structure. To do that, you can use something called an array. It's the simplest form of a data structure. Or you can also use something called a vector and along with many other things. But we're just going to use array for now. An array, we represent it as such. You can put in a different number. So let's say it has all these spaces right here. All these are set to zero because they're empty. But if we're going to put something in there, we can put in person one, person two, person three, and person four. So now these people are stored into a single thing. 
but we can just call this array group. And there's four different people inside this group. So let's say we wanted the first person in the group, as we knew there was one to four people. In coding usually, it'll start off with the number zero. So it'll actually be zero through three. So let's say you wanted to get the name of the very first person. Remember it's not one, it's going to be zero. So you plug in zero into this array, and then you can just call whatever you wanted from that structure. You can call a name, you can call its age, or its wallet, and you'll be able to get the same information. You can also just do this for 0.1 or any sort of number, as long as it's a number within the group, and remember to subtract one from it. Going back to the original math equation that we had right here with the variables, y equals mx plus b, Let's say you were to use something like this or something even more complex over and over again. You don't want to have to type this out every single time, especially if it was a complex formula using multiple different things within it. So in order to store that together, you use something called a function. A function can be given variables and it can also return a variable. With the example of y equals mx plus b, we're going to be returning y, which will be an integer. So right here. We can have an integer, then we'll have the name of our function, and then we can pass in information. We'll set these all to be integers. So m, x, and b. And this will be a function where we can do the math for this equation. So we can create a new integer for y, and then we also need to return y. And now we can just do y equals mx and the multiplication plus b. As you can tell, this is a really simple example, simple code. You don't mean doing a formula or a function for something this simple. But let's say you had something more complex. You can plug in information and return information. So let's say you wanted to create a sentence with a person. So what you can do is you can return a string. And then we'll just call this function and you can pass in a person. And now this function, we can create a sentence that will say something like, name has wallet dollars. As you can tell right here, these will be the variables. So to do that, we'll create a new string which we can just call it string s. So we'll just say string s. And then we can say s equals person, which we can call it person p. So s equals p dot name plus, then quotes, has, and then plus p dot wallet plus dollars. Now you just need to return s. So now if you had to run this function, we can pass in group, and let's just pass in the first person in the group. And now it's going to give it the information, and it can be able to get the name and the wallet, and a return a string. So we can have string x up here, and you do x equals function. So now this x is going to be equal to the output of what you got from this function. And it's basically as simple as that. A different way to store information where you can store variables and functions is like a structure, but instead it's called a class. And in this class, you can have information that is public or private. So we have public right here and private right here. And public could be information that anyone can get from anywhere. As we were doing before, you could just do point name, point wallet when you're talking to the person, and you can just pull its information. Let's say we wanted to have the person's name public. So you can just have name right here, that'll be a string, but you didn't want people to know how much money they had. You can put that in a wallet. So now if you were to have this person you can ask it for its name, but you could not ask it for how much money it had. So if you wanted to do the actual formula, you wanted to do some sort of subtraction or addition to its wallet, you can have a function right here for changing its wallet price. 
right here so you can pass in some sort of information and it'll change whatever is in the wallet without actually ever altering the wallet number itself and that is it for simple coding in C++ I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and you guys were able to understand everything I'll be having a more in-depth tutorial on how to learn C++ in the near future if you guys are new to the channel go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you guys like the video like it so I can make more content just like this I just gained another hundred followers recently I really it's really awesome I really appreciate it we reached a 600 milestone and I really love it so much if you guys are following here on the channel thank you guys again so much if you guys are new here once again subscribe check out my other videos I do a lot of programming and game related tutorials and once again thanks again for watching the whole video and see you guys again next time